But very talentedly, she's challenged to be talented at any level, at any speed. And I think that when all these guys say this, you have to listen to these people. You have me when you can see. You are fast, you can go. I see you. I see you. If you are fast, you have to do the What the hell? It's not my fault that you're slow. This is the only sport in the world where you start your career at the Indianapolis 500. If you're a baseball player, you go for the Triple A or Single A or W. You start at Single A and you go all the way to Triple A. If you're good enough, you make it to the majors. No, not in racing. You get a sponsor, you get a car, and you go take your rookie test and you run the Indy 500. Oh my, this is fun. Milka Duno, the only driver to make Danica Patrick look like AJ Foyt. Well, that's a bit of a stretch, but if you saw her race from 2007 to 2010 in IndyCar, you may think otherwise. Milka Duno was born and raised in the country of Venezuela. Unlike a lot of the busts we cover on this channel, her racing career didn't start until she was approaching her mid-20s. While she got some work as a model, she actually has multiple master's degrees. Her career began in the late 90s as she bounced around multiple series. The most notable was the Ferrari Challenge, where she became the first woman in series history to win a race in the United States. When she came to the States to further her racing career, she was also beginning an open wheel. While she was racing in the Barber Dodge Pro Series, she also made her American Le Mans Series debut in 2000. And really, her time racing sports cars was the peak of her career. In seven American Le Mans starts in 2001, she scored four wins as well as scoring scoring six podiums and three poles. By season's end, she was crowned vice champion driver in the LMP 675 class. Then from 2004 to 2007, she raced full-time in Rolex Grand Am. She won three races from 2004 to 2005, as well as scoring six podiums. In 2007, she finished second in the Rolex 24, becoming the highest finishing female driver in the race's storied history. Now, of course, in those wins and podiums, she wasn't the only one driving for her team, and she did have some of her infamous Milka Duno moments from time to time, but at the end of the day, when you really look at it, her sports car career was very respectable. It was when she made the move to IndyCar that this perception began to change. The team she finished second in the Rolex 24 with was Sam Max Motorsports, and with the help from Sitco, they were able to put a 10 race deal together. While she was racing sports cars, she had brief stints in open wheel, racing in the Barber Dodge Pro Series, the Formula Nissan 2000 Series, as well as the World Series by Nissan. But those results paled in comparison to her sports car career. So when it was announced she would be competing in 10 races that season, oh boy. Will the league approve her? Will they publicly proclaim no? Miller's wrong. Duna's good to go. I'd say they'd do anything to say Miller's wrong, but that's not the point. The point is this. They'll take her to Texas. They'll crank so much wing in it that we could take anybody at Speed TV and they could run 175. And they'll go out and she'll run 190 miles an hour wide open, come in, get the photo ops and smile and say, gee, this was great. And all the people at the track will probably have to pass her. If they run her in traffic, who knows what the verdict might be. But they want this woman in the race. They want three women. They want Sitco's money. And they'll do whatever it takes. And I've been talking to drivers all weekend, and they all came up to me with nobody watching and saying, hey, thanks for writing that story. She doesn't belong in an Indy car, but they're going to make it easier for her, and she'll pass that test. As the late Robin Miller predicted, she passed her test with flying colors, and in her IndyCar Series debut at Kansas, she finished six laps down. She was well off the pace from start to finish, and then her next race would end up being the freaking Indy 500. Once again, she was not only off the pace, but she ended up crashing before the halfway mark and it is milka duno on lap 65 milka was running in 27th position had gotten as high as 23rd but her day is over here in her debut okay, at okay? indianapolis now let's watch here she goes in you know what she went to turn in she looks like she got off the throttle because she was going too fast for the traffic that was in front of her when you take your foot off the throttle like that the back end of the car gets light and it spins the back end of the car around now watch the front it smacks the wall, 
spins the car 180 degrees and just keeps going along the wall. At least that was the only crash from her rookie season. Her best performance was the following race at Texas with an 11th place finish, although she ended up finishing 7 laps down this time, and in the rest of the races she ran in, she was either pulled off the track for being too slow or because of some type of mechanical failure. But in the season finale at Chicagoland, she did end up finishing the race, although 16 laps down. While Dario Franchitti went on to win the race and championship that day, his wife at the time, actress Ashley Judd, ripped Milka after the race, saying, and I know this is not very sportsmanlike, but they've got to get the 23 car off the track. It's very dangerous. I'm tired of holding my tongue. When a car is 10 miles off the pace, it's not appropriate for it to be racing people's lives are at stake. For the 2008 season, Milka made the switch over to Dreyer and Reinbold Racing, taking the Sitco sponsorship with her. Let's go back, take another look. So 23 of Milka Duna has lost it, and you know something? Oh. Six of Ryan Briscoe is just collected as her car starts to move up the racetrack. It's the first person we've seen today pull off a pass on the high side, but she... She's lucky she did anything, and Buddy's lucky that she didn't bump into him and knock him into yep. the wall. Getting ready for the restart. And as you can see, it looked like Milko got to being accelerating, and she was going to hit the car in front, so she locked up her brakes. And the reason we're uh, talking about Danica, well, yesterday in practice, it was uh, a bit interesting. Let's take you back and show you what happened. I happen to be watching this on the track at this time, and this was the second attempt for Danica Patrick to try and get past Milko Duno. She had caught up to her earlier, she backed off by about a quarter of a track, and then she caught back up to her again very quickly because Milka was off the pace. Now Danica tries to make another move continuously. She gets frustrated, and she does finally get inside Milka going down the back straightaway, but Milka should have moved over because she knew that Danica was much faster at this point in time, Marty. <laughs> Danica has every reason to be upset because when you're in practice you're not racing for a position when you're driving the car and you don't see anybody in the mirror then you look again and somebody's coming up onto you very quickly is closed up like gap certainly they're faster let them go by she did race Danica into the turn I don't understand that but I question Danica's approach on it maybe go over there in a bit more of a user-friendly manner and maybe have a bit of a conversation because the way she arrived it just really escalated into words it looked like Danica was trying to have a conversation but Milka wasn't having any of it well Danica went on to win a race that season, Milka went on to score five DNFs. But there is a silver lining, at least for her standards. In the season finale at Chicagoland, she ended up leading five laps. So if you were there on September 7th, 2008, you not only witnessed one of the greatest finishes in IndyCar history, but you also witnessed the only laps Milka Duno ever led. While 2009 was more of the same, it would mark the final year she drove for Dreyer and Reinbold Racing. She was moving on for a better opportunity, and that was to race full-time. What? Dell Coin Racing gave her a full-time ride for the 2010 season, with Sitco coming along, of course. You could make a case that this full-time effort is arguably the worst ever. One that was so bad that the only race they ended up missing was the Indy 500. If you're gonna go that slow, you have to go, guys. You have to. Yeah, but wake up, play. man. Wake up. You just caused us to session I saw there. you, but I go out. You didn't see me until lovely. I got next to you. Almost you made me go out. No, okay. If you're going to go that slow, you got to drive your mirrors, hon. I'm sorry. Yeah. You have to. Dario is uh, languishing back here in ninth place and did some 
high drive and it looks like to avoid Milka. Ooh, Ooh. yeah, right ahead of him. There's yeah. a championship flash before your eyes. Her nearly costing Dario Franchitti a championship was her final moment in IndyCar. In 16 starts, she DNF'd in nine races more than half. In her 43 career IndyCar starts over four seasons, she scored zero wins, zero podiums and poles, and had a career average finish of 20.4, while only leading five laps. After her IndyCar career was over, she ended up racing in ARCA for a few seasons, eventually going full-time in 2013, where she scored a pole. But towards the end of that season, Venezuela had a financial scandal on its hands, as it was cutting sponsorship money for Venezuelan drivers, as six of them were accused of fraud. Turns out the Venezuelan government had been funding her racing career this entire time, and instead of having these funds go towards helping out the people of Venezuela, nope, we're gonna use them to crash in the Indy 500. After that came out, she only made four more starts, two in the Xfinity series, one in the Truck series, and one in the Arca East series, and hasn't raced since. It's safe to say, her career is over. There's no question she did accomplish quite a bit and it's very remarkable considering she started in her mid 20s but as far as her IndyCar career is concerned there is no question that Milka Duno is a massive IndyCar bust. And once again that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.